What determines the value of a currency? In this video, I'm going to discuss how inflation occurs and what determines the value of a currency, real assets, and more. So sit back, relax, and watch the whole video, or you can use the timestamps in the description to jump to whatever section interests you. First factor that I want to explain to you about how a given currency's value goes up or down is the amount of a given currency in circulation and relative inflation. This is a fairly simple matter of supply and demand. Assuming demand for a currency remains the same, increasing the supply of the currency should decrease the currency's value. People often refer to both the increased price of goods and services and the reduced value of a currency as inflation. This is a useful way to think about it, but technically the reduced value of the currency is what causes the price of goods to go up. Only one of those is inflation. One is the illness, the other a symptom. Simple enough, right? If a large amount of money supply were to be burned up in a fire, it would have the opposite effect. We would have deflation, or the value of the currency would actually go up. Not likely, though, uh, since at the time of this writing, every national bank across the globe seemed to have their money printers on full automatic. Like all markets, currency is affected by both its supply and demand. The desirability or demand for a given currency also results in changes to its value. The more foreign countries want to hold a certain currency, the more it is worth, and the less they want it, the less it is worth. For example, the US dollar is often touted as the international business currency, especially for fossil fuel transactions. Most countries' national banks also use the US dollar as their reserve currency, as in they stockpile massive reserves of that currency for emergencies. This is similar to what most of the world used to do with precious metals like gold and silver. Additionally, as of this writing, Ecuador, El Salvador, Zimbabwe, Guam, and several more island nations use the US dollar as their primary currency. Why bother to print your own? There are many factors that affect demand for a currency, such as interest rates between countries, political considerations, expectations, and trade balance. For instance, if you knew a certain country was going to enter a costly war, which might result in the collapse of its economy, you would probably want to get rid of any currency you had from that country, and the value of that currency would consequently fall, even before their own economy collapses. This is at least part of why Africa has had a difficult time growing its economy. Knowing who is in control within its borders is not easy. In many cases, the federal government doesn't control much territory beyond its capital city, despite the arbitrarily drawn border lines that the United Nations might recognize. This means that any investments or contractual obligations you might enter into with a country operating in Africa won't necessarily be enforced because you cannot expect that things will necessarily go according to the contract. The loss of purchasing power is displayed as a general rise in prices. General rise, not just specific goods and services. For instance, when calculating inflation, there's a good chance you will use what is called a basket of goods. If 1 in 10 households will buy a new car each year, and one in four households will buy a used car each year, then you might use one-tenth and one-quarter of the average or median price of new or used cars in your basket of goods. When you compare these numbers on a diversified basket of goods from year to year, you can get a sense of the rate of inflation. There are several factors that can cause specific goods and services to inflate. Demand inflation, inflation of costs, self-built inflation, and then inflation of the monetary base. First of all, demand inflation. Demand inflation occurs when the demand for specific products is greater than the supply. For example, if everyone intends to buy sneakers of the same brand, that price can go up because there will not be enough sneakers for all buyers. Therefore, only those who are willing to pay a higher price for the shoes will be able to get them after the companies notice that their entire stock is being bought out. That's why Zillow has that little meter calling different zip codes, either a buyer's market or a seller's market. 
Secondly, cost inflation. When costs rise, companies will have to increase the sale price of their products to be able to shoulder them. For example, if rubber or energy costs rise noticeably, the manufacturing process will be more expensive. So, companies will increase their sales price to be able to assume this increase in their costs without diminishing their profit margin. The extent to which a company will do this depends on the elasticity of their product's demand. How much people will change their purchasing habits based on the price change. For instance, one of the reasons that the general rate of inflation of real estate, especially rent, generally goes up faster than the rate of inflation of the general U.S. economy is because rent and housing are relatively inelastic, meaning that even if housing costs go up 20%, you still need a place to live, so you'll pay that increased price if at all possible. However, things like escape rooms or movie theaters and a lot of entertainment options are relatively elastic. If the escape rooms are too expensive to you, then you can just go to the movie with your friends instead. And if the theater is too expensive to you, then you can just watch this YouTube video. Third, self-built inflation. There are occasions when, to avoid an approaching price bump, there is a gradual increase in prices in order to avoid the damage that such a sudden rise could cause. This gradual rise is what is called self-built inflation. Preemptively raising prices because you know your cost to operate a business will spike every now and then. It might spike every three to five years by $100 a month. So you'll try to increase the price you charge each month by $25 annually, allowing you to keep ahead of those bumps in your industry that you know are inevitable. Your willingness to do this will vary based on the elasticity of your customer base's demand as well as decision makers' risk tolerance. Now, the last and most important one, inflation of the monetary base. This is true inflation influencing the cost of goods and services. Originally, the problem of money support, what grants money its value, was virtually non-existent because it was worth its own composition. Coins made of precious metals such as gold or silver whose exchange value was the same as their intrinsic value. My quarter ounce of gold is worth about the same as yours even though yours is Spanish and mine is French. However, this system ended when government introduced the gold standard, a system by which the currency in circulation had no value in itself, but was secured by an equivalent amount of gold. This was known as commodity currency. So instead of giving me, instead of me giving you a quarter ounce chunk of gold with a U.S. government stamp on it, I would give you a piece of paper which says you are entitled to a quarter ounce of gold from the U.S. government. However, this system broke down partly because states in need of liquidity issued more currency, lowering its value. Crises such as the German hyperinflation of the 1920s would occur. So, a new system sought to ensure economic stability. The proposal came with the Bretton Woods Accords in 1944, sponsored by the United States. This country had emerged from World War II as the world's foremost military and economic power at a global level, which gave it enough weight for the rest of the countries to accept a system by which all currencies were compared to the US dollar. The United States promised to keep the value of its currency stable in relation to gold, the rest of the countries would in turn use the dollar as a backup. You might have noticed uh, a an issue in that story, we didn't keep doing the same thing that we said we were going to do. However, the economic problems that the United States was going through in the early 1970s caused the then American president, Richard Nixon, to decide in 1971 to end this system 30 years after its creation, as part of what would become known as the Nixon Shock. Thereafter, the dollar, and with it, most other currencies, would abandon the gold standard and would fluctuate according to the supply and demand of the market, with no other support than the promise that this money was worth what the market and its backing government deemed its value to be. This type of money, now backed by gold or other precious metal, or by another currency such as the dollar, is known as fiat currency, not like the car. Now, what is most important in this market is the confidence that a currency arouses. Depending on the confidence as well as the law of supply and demand, the value of the currencies will vary. Remember earlier when I said that expectations matter. 
the US dollar remains a strong currency because people's trust in that currency is strong. The institutions that are in charge of regulating foreign currencies are usually central banks, which are mostly national, although there are exceptions like the European Central Bank. Now, most governments set a target inflation rate because generally, a small amount of inflation is considered good for an economy. Hence why the US has averaged about 3% prior to the Great Recession and 2% since then, 2020 notwithstanding. This is why finding a way to earn and save enough money every month to where you can invest is so critical. Because every year, your $1,000 becomes worth only $980, give or take a little. There are basically three major investment categories that you can go for. Real assets, intangible assets, and financial assets. My favorite and most recommended form of investing is real estate, a real asset. Although real estate investing is capital intensive, meaning you probably need a good $20,000 saved up even in cheaper areas, and this can take quite a while for a lot of people. I honestly don't own any intangible assets. Uh, these are things like intellectual property, patents and copyrights for instance. Maybe this YouTube video. The easiest major investment category to get into is financial assets. This can refer to multiple things, but stocks are the big one. Stocks are cheap and easy to get started on. Some tools to use are in the description below. Most of the links will give you free stocks once you sign up and fund an account with $100 or so. All this to protect your money against inflation. However, the raw supply and demand comparison isn't always right. MV equals PT. M is the quantity of money. V is the speed money flows around the economy. P is the level of prices. And T is the number of transactions. If you believe V and T are stable, then control of the money supply guarantees control of inflation. Quantitative easing raises M, so if V is fixed, it will push up P or T or both. So either people can buy and sell things a lot more often, or if they're buying and selling things about the same amount, like you still get one carton of eggs every week, then the price of those eggs must go up because the speed money flows around the economy stayed the same and the money supply went up. There's a good chance that we are about to enter a big recession with lots of inflation. The Fed has pumped a lot of money into the economy, although a lot of it will be returned since the money is being issued partly in loans or what are effectively early tax returns. But if banks, companies, or households sit on the extra cash, sending the velocity of money plummeting and reducing the number of transactions, it is possible that there wouldn't be any immediate or even moderate term inflation. We'd only begin to feel this inflation creep in as the economy slowly accelerates back to its previous pace. What I want you to do is take care of yourself. To that end, I'd love a comment below on what you would like more or less of, and subscribing and hitting the notification bell will let you know every weekend when I publish a new video, and I am always listening to your feedback. You only have one life to live. Grow it relentlessly.